So I woke up and I took the, the fucking belt off from around my neck and I had to walk over the baby chickens and just fucking dipped out. Where'd you hide it all? Dude, I was fucking butt ass naked. Where do you think I held, I fucking hit it all? <laughs> Your ass. <laughs> And what's crazy is that's only number, like, rank number two in list of craziest baby showers I've ever been to. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Are we recording? What? <laughs> 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 <Do> your... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what? What's going on, man? It's your man, Qualified, a.k.a. the Dirty Daddy, a.k.a. Dr. Foot Lover, a.k.a. Mr. Black Future, a.k.a. the Black American Dream, a.k.a. Black ECW, a.k.a. Mr. A.k.a. Yo, it's Eddie C. Uh-huh. A.k.a. Maka Kilo's Black Mamba. Ooh. A.k.a. Cap City's Killer. And that's all right, a yeah. city with a C. With a C? Yeah. That's a KCK. Yeah. So I'm not making that mistake again. Never. <laughs> <laughs> AKA the Chicken Katsu mini plate killer. Yes. AKA Mr. Wiggles in the flesh. What Let's up? get wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> I should make a dance. You <laughs> need to. Do the wiggle. Yes. Bruh. I'm telling I, you, I that's a track. Christian, that's a viral I need, track. I need, I need to have Christian make that up. Yeah. And Lily. Do the wiggle, uh, uh, yeah. Do the wiggle, uh. Hit it, hit it. It's like it's like uh the Bernie, but instead of going back with it. Yeah. I uh, just just wiggle with it. Just wiggle with it. Wiggle with I it. Feel it, man. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Young queen. Yeah, I'm rolling with my niggas. Is you feeling me? You don't want to be around Mr. Wiggles when he start getting wiggly. Uh, uh. Hit him with the wiggle. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that was a little stiff. That might have been a hurricane jerk. <laughs> oh, man. Not hip to all these new dances. Hey, man. man. We just made it up right now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's the so newest dance. Exactly. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Oh, man. He's still on the twist. <laughs> right? And shout. I think of John Travolta anytime I think of the twist. Uh, From that movie, yeah. actually. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. With Thurman? Yes. Mm -hmm. I wonder if uh, I ever fucking watched that movie yet. Oh. <laughs> I thought I'm you were going to ask if he ever fucking You know how long it's Thurman? been? You haven't seen that? <laughs> Who knows? Shit is. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Get at us. Um... <laughs> Shit, man, how you doing, bro? Eh. Okay. <laughs> wow. No, I'm, I mean, it's like that sometimes. Yeah, what, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you, Jason? I'm cool. It's chilling. We here. How, we how, here. how are you doing, Quali? Uh, you know, I've been better. I've been worse. Mm -hmm. But I'm here. You are here. Right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'm here with you guys. Yeah. It's a good time. Uh, you know who didn't have a good time this weekend? Uh, this past weekend? Uh, Freddie Gibbs. Why not? Freddie Gibbs had a show in Buffalo. Um, and previously, he's been kind of having a little back and forth with uh, Benny the Butcher. Mm. Uh, of of Griselda. Griselda. Uh, and uh, if, if you guys don't know, they're from Buffalo. Um, the home of chicken wings buffalo wings yeah and the buffalo bills yeah but mostly the wings the and the wings <laughs> and griselda and griselda yeah so uh freddie gibbs had buffalo he had back-to-back -back shows in buffalo on his tour dates and uh they kind of been going back and forth and he showed up in buffalo and he went to a barbecue spot and got jumped by like 20 niggas 20 yeah. I feel like that's an exaggeration. 
Bro, hold up. It's like when you get your ass whooped by like two people. And it's like, like right. six of them motherfuckers. Hold up. Let me find a video because there's video. What I say. There's video. Yeah. I'm about to show you. I got jumped by eight guys once, but I tell everybody it was 15. Yeah. Sometimes there was one time I just got my ass whooped and said that there was a bunch of niggas. It was just one. Hold up. That that one time I fought that one dude. Yeah. And, it was. and there was there was three of them. But I always tell people there was three of them, even though I only fought one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the fish, you know, like when you say you got a fish that was this big, but it was like that big. Yeah. All right, hold up. I mean, I don't fish. Oh, but... <laughs> hey, don't I'm mock my beard. Trying to be like daddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. So here we go. Here's you want me to? Video. Do you want me to show the video? No, to not. No. Yeah. You can't even see who they whooping on. Boom. <laughs> There's an arrow that says Freddy. <laughs> All right, and then bam! Look at this. He's the nigga in the white tee. Oh no! There's a bunch green. of niggas in white tees. He's in the green tee. I don't even see a green team. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's like the whole restaurant was whooping his ass. Yeah. Basically. The cooks came out from the back. <laughs> they, uh, once, he got, once he got on the ground, I just saw a nigga throw a plate. So, <laughs> like, they was wild. There may, they may have been forks involved. Um, I think I got some pictures here uh, that, I, that I can show you real quick. Did y'all see the... Uh, that remind me of... Um... It's like a Chinese restaurant, and it was an all-out brawl. People were like flipping tables and throwing plates and swinging chairs. And at one point, this dude like reaches for the the uh, teacup. I'm like, "What the fuck are you gonna do with a teacup?" But he starts punching people with it. I was like, "Oh shit, that's what you'll do." Were they mad at their fortune from their fortune cookie? I, fucking, I don't know. Hold on, I want to say that. Fuck you and your mama. So that's it. <laughs> That's a picture of Freddie. Uh, oh, I saw you, you posted that on your Instagram. Yeah, so that's a picture of Freddie later at the at the show, as you can see. This old man, my man, is 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 lumped Swollen. up. Swollen. He looks like uh, Will Smith in the movie Hitched after he eats the fucking self yeah. shellfish or whatever. But uh, but yeah, as you can see, he went out and performed anyway. Uh, so I mean, shit. Hey. Nah, nigga. That's. Yeah. I mean, hey, shit. That's. That's some G shit. Like you can't. I came through twenty of y'all niggas, pack uh, beat me up, and I still showed up. And y'all didn't beat me up bad enough to where I couldn't perform in my show. Yeah, I still did it in in your city. What's up, nigga? It's because rappers don't have medical. A doctor would have told him not to do that. You just go home. <laughs> I don't know. know. Freddie Gibbs is, is doing all right. I think he can pay for some medical at this point. But um, There's no four hundred one k. When you're I mean, a rapper, I don't think there's medical. I mean, I don't know. He's doing. I, I, well, he's he's an actor too. So uh, SAG, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean. So there we go. He might he might actually have some medical. That's true. Um, it's but important. Uh, it's important kids get a job with medical. Facts. It's so real you get shit. your ass whooped. You can see a doctor. Exactly. Um, you know, and you don't have to be afraid of like if you need an ambulance, you don't have to like call your friend to pick you up instead. Um. Oh, this is the Chinese uh, restaurant. Oh, oh, shit. shit. Oh, shit. Okay, this nigga's still eating. <laughs> this nigga threw the whole thing. That's a whole thing. Yo, he's recording. Walk, right? He's recording and using his chopsticks to still he's eat noodles at the same time. Hell oh, yeah. Like that. It's just another day mm -hmm. in Chinatown. Yeah. But uh, Chinese people get down, man. Yeah. We see. But yeah, nah. So, uh, so that's that's what happened with Freddie Gibbs. So hopefully, like they squash the beef because they're both uh, Griselda and Freddie Gibbs. Uh, that Griselda's a dope camp. Uh, Benny's dope as hell. Uh, Freddie Gibbs is dope, and it seems like there would be like a lot of overlap with their fans, mm -hmm. their fan bases. So like. Uh, I feel like they could get money together, like a Grisel like a Griselda Freddie Gibbs tour. Like I would go to that. Yeah. Also, before I lose this, Chinese people get down, but there's like eight billion of them motherfuckers. So odds are there was gonna be some hood ass Chinese niggas. They, oh, gotta be. Yeah. Well, I mean, they gotta get down because with that much people, you know what I mean. And there's only six billion people in the world, so yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, so Freddie Gibbs. 
uh, I didn't know that was. I didn't recognize him when, yeah. you, when you posted that. Exactly. I, like because when you when you posted it and you said whatever you said, uh, I was like, who the fuck is this nigga? Yeah, man, Freddie Gibbs. Well, that's why I Freddie posted Gibbs with one a, of his songs with a big ass Freddie Gibbs, but just with a fatter face. Yeah, man. yeah. Uh, also, this past weekend there was the uh, Lovers and Friends. Uh, festival. Oh yeah, was it in Which, Vegas? Uh, yeah. yeah. So they had announced that like before COVID, and it looked like fucking amazing. Uh, it's like fucking everybody. Yeah, everybody like from the two thousands mm -hmm. and shit. Like Nelly was on there, Ja Rule and Ashanti, like just like fucking all the shit that was on the radio when we were in high school and middle school. Um, but uh, that uh, that show popped off. Uh, Mace actually had a set at this show murder mace or pastor mace uh murder mace pa uh pastor murder mace oh <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, so mace had a mace had a set at this show and uh he's performing and his music cuts out and he rocks acapella and like the crowd's rapping along with him even without the beat and shit like that so you know it's whatever and his set ends up getting cut short because, you know, technical difficulties. But after the fact, uh, Mace comes out and says that he thinks Diddy uh, paid people to fuck his setup at the Lovers and Friends Festival. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he has come at Diddy, like, a, uh, in the past couple years uh, about, the sp uh, about the money. Um, he's coming at Diddy about, um, he dissed him on one of his, uh, diss tracks and shit like that. Um, so it's not a new thing for him to come at Diddy. Uh, but I just thought that was kind of, uh, humorous. Do you, do you remember when Dipset dissed Mace? Yeah. That was one of the, like one of the, one of my favorite lines ever. Yeah. Did you did you know that Dipset and Mace had issues no. about the whole Harlem world because they're both from Harlem. Oh, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I think it's Joel Santana. He was like everybody saying welcome in this, welcome in that. He wasn't welcome in the first place. How we welcome him back? back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Ooh! <laughs> yeah. And it's even crazy because like uh, like even going back further, like when Mace was hot and shit, like Cam and Mace, like I mean, murder Mace and Killer Cam. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? They went to high school together and shit. Like, shit. the niggas played basketball together and shit like that. Like, so, they've known each other for, like, a long time. Like, so, you know, I think there's uh, allegedly something about, like, a, there might have been a, allegedly, like, a bad deal between uh, Mace and Cam, like, back in the day. I don't know. But, like, you know, should be happening, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that Diddy... Gave a fuck about Mace's set at Lovers and Friends. Um, I I highly doubt it. I don't, that nigga's getting money. I don't think that he would do that. Um, but uh, I think also he had like the Billboard Awards uh, was this weekend too. I don't know. This past weekend. I don't I, I haven't um, watched an awards show in forever. I didn't watch it either, but I know that it happened. <laughs> 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 I, i'm aware that it happened just because uh there was some white girl i can't i don't know what her name is uh but she was like there with megan the stallion and she was just like acting weird as shit oh that's that meme i've weird. been seeing where they do like a cut scene when she pops her head out yeah yeah, yeah so Ooh. like i don't know who that i, I don't know who she is the white girl is just acting weird as shit she looks scary as fuck too yeah, yeah. She honestly alien? she was probably just like on coke Coca-Cola. I don't know how this works with YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's a problem for YouTube. All right, cool. TikTok don't fuck yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, TikTok don't, don't fuck yeah. with it. Yeah, Coke, Coke, Coke. Coke, uh, Coke. <laughs> All right, but, uh, but yeah, no, so that's, uh, those are some, uh, you know, interesting things I saw over the weekend. Hmm. See, if it wasn't for you telling me these things that are happening, I wouldn't fucking know. That's why I'm here, man. Yeah, that's why we're friends. Yeah. I gotcha. keep you around to keep me informed yeah man that's you know now that i'm like a now that i'm single and shit like that's hey. I, I have like time to he's single ladies uh if you got feet <laughs> if you got feet that's pretty though gotta put the emphasis oh <laughs> yeah I, I don't want no i don't want no hobbit toes, hobbit toes. <laughs> do hobbits have 
ugly toes? Yeah, hobbits are, have terrible feet. That's like one of the things that they're known to have. Maybe because they walk around barefooted, huh? Exactly. Don't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I would have suspected you'd like that, that they're walking around barefooted all Yo, day. Yo, dirty feet is a whole different thing. I mean, yeah. Some people like that, though. Yeah, yeah. But it's I a whole different like, subgenre. Yeah, but you can't like just walk around. Is it a subgenre? You, yes. Or, well, it's. I know, thought it was a, in the same vein. Like, I, I, I was just my assumption. I, I mean, like, like how like there's hip hop, but then there's like trap, and then there's like. Uh, yeah, you know I mean. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you some shit on my Instagram. Later. Different shit. Cloud rap. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, nah, man. I hope like, this is a trap music video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not what I think it is. It's like. Yeah, you can't just be out here working. You can't just be out here like walking through the goddamn woods barefoot all the time. Like you can't just be doing everything barefoot. Like you gotta, like, cause I still want them shits to be like soft and shit. Like that's not gonna happen if you just out here. You ever, you ever have hard feet in your mouth? Walking crazy. I've never had feet in my mouth. Yeah. Nigga. Yeah, if you if you ever try it, you definitely shouldn't try it with some hard feet. Yeah, the soft feet. Right. That's gonna be the no. least. This, you're gonna be like, <sighs> it's like like imagine you trying to suck some toes and then it's, no. a bitch just put a brick in your mouth. I'm not. Yeah, it's like rough. You don't want that. You don't. Uh, don't Eat yeah, any of this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't. You, you, let's change the subject because I was about to. <laughs> Go but ahead. hey, okay. Oh, you know, you know, you know what also happened recently? What? Marlon Craft dropped an album. Okay. And you know who doesn't care about it? Who? Literally anyone because Kendrick Lamar dropped an album. That is true. I mean, sorry, <laughs> Marlon Craft. <laughs> I fucked with you, man. And like, I was. I, I care I, that you dropped an yeah. album. I just haven't listened to it yet. I fucking. So I follow you on Instagram, Marlon, Mr. Craft, if you will. And, uh,. He, he posted something about like, oh, which song on my album do you like the best? And I was like, I don't, I didn't even know you dropped the album, bro. You dropped the same week as fucking Kendrick. You know who else dropped? Who? Uh, my Chemical Romance. Not an album. And they just dropped a song. Okay. Well, that's, that's a different genre. I could fuck with that. That's cool. I'm going to listen yeah. to it later. So I'm still looking at Marlon listen. Craft because I don't know who that is. Marlon Craft is the dude who does that song, Can't Call It. That's like, he, a lot of his shit is about mental health. Yeah. Oh. I've played his music around a lot. Yeah, he actually IG. came uh, here and played. Uh, he's like, this, I've been listening to this one song. I feel like it talks about me. I think it was like right when he uh, got back. Oh, yeah. shit. We'll play some Marlon Craft later. Anyway, Kendrick. Ken. He needs a cheese sponsorship, by the way. <laughs> he's white. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, no, that's, I, that's, how do we get away with saying stuff like that? Imagine if like we were talking about a black rapper and you're like, yeah, he should get like a ch- he, this guy should get a wait, chicken hold up, hold up. sponsorship. My, and I'm like, yeah, fucking, he's black. My fucking <laughs> joke was not about his skin color; it was about his name. I know. Well, yeah. How do I get away with that? I guess. <laughs> I, <And> do I? <laughs> I mean, leave a shit, comment. You just did. <laughs> no, it's gonna I, be my thing, all episode. Let's talk I did see this thing where uh, they were talking about how much like white people love cheese. Yeah, I know. I saw it too. Yeah, and they, I mean, it was on. Um, they have Boondocks. those. They have the boards of it's cheese on a lot of shit. No, I saw there's the this. Uh, there's like this. Uh, Sh- Shaburi boards. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the shark coochie. Yeah, shark coochie. Yeah, the, sh- the uh, shark, shark coochie. Yeah, the shark coochie boards. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You, right. you enjoy those uh, shark coochies? Yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. The bo- the boards. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's cool. I don't know. To me, cheese is cheese. I mean, maybe, nah, maybe but I need you to get eat it with like other stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the meats, the no, crackers, like, crackers. Have, like some ham up yeah. there, like some crackers <laughs> and shit, like some grapes in that bitch. Yeah. yeah. Some, a little bit of chocolate. Mm-hmm. Shout hey, out to hey. my homegirl Riley. I went to this party and she had one of those shark coochie boards up there, and like, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, this shit is, like, fancy. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I was supposed to be at this party. <laughs> I just imagine, like, there's, like, a waiter, butler guy walking yeah. around with there it. There wasn't, but there should have been. There should yeah. be. That's yeah. refilling the lavash. I don't even know what that the is. The fucking lavash. Yeah. Nigga, you ain't got lavash at your party? Yeah. You ain't got no Yeezy, mm-hmm. yo, Serrano? <laughs> 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 K dot. All right, Kendrick Lamar dropped K-Dot. a fucking album. He dropped an album. He dropped and an album. It was fucking incredible. 
uh, is how I felt. Like, all right. I found it to be quite mundane. <laughs> we already told you that's not a good thing. Fuck. <laughs> It all was right. fucking great. Yeah. Um, it was all right. <laughs> this one. Yeah. All right. No. no uh, it, was, it was cool. It, like, I liked it, but I, mm, it, left, gonna... it left more. I think I think there's, I wanted something else from it. Like, there was something missing. What? He ain't black. You ever seen that? <laughs> you ever seen that fucking commercial with Kobe Bryant and Kanye West? Yeah. Where he was like, Kanye, what, you seen that commercial? Kanye West is talking Different to Kobe. animal, but the same beast. He, Kobe, so Kobe Bryant is like doing a like a TED talk, and exactly. Kanye West is in the uh, audience, and he's he's he. <laughs> Which one am I in this analogy? <laughs> you're you're fucking Kobe Bryant, all right? Because Kanye <laughs> West is like, I've broken every record there is to break. What am I supposed to do? And Kobe's like, break more records. And he was like, well, I've done this, this, and this. He was like, do more. My response to what you just fucking said is, what more does Kendrick have to fucking do? It's not about achievement. It's about... No, no, no. About what What other topic does he need to fucking talk it's about? It's not about a topic. That's, That's what I'm what saying. That's why I say he not black. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what is it? I that, pulled over. That statement, that, pure, that statement is purely on their... Either none of this made it onto my rotation of like, shit I need to listen to on a regular basis. There's dope shit. There's he he did a real good job of depicting the shit we went through for the last two years with the pandemic, and then even prior to now with like censorship and all kinds of other crazy shit, which is awesome. And it, it's he's really like it's that next step, right? As an artist, mm -hmm. but as a consumer, as a listener, I also want a song to just jam, like. You know what I mean? Like when I, when we going out to do some shit and I want to put on a fucking song, I have songs from his previous albums that do that. It's not his whole fucking album, but there are songs and I didn't find that song here. That's I, the only thing. I That's saw, all I'm saying. I saw I saw a meme. It was like Kendrick Lamar talks about X, Y, and Z, all these like issues, but everyone is like, well, where's the, where's the song for the radio? That's you. I'm gonna turn this way, <laughs> nigga. When Me I heard, too. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard "We Cry Together," I pulled the fuck over. No, I feel you. I couldn't. Yeah, I, yeah that like, shit was that, crazy. That shit, it was intense. Um, well, I was in the, mo I was uh, in Target, and that song was playing, and she said, "You got a little dick," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I'm like freaking out in the milk section. <laughs> Like, <laughs> he thought he was going to be doing all the talk in this episode. <laughs> Dude, all right. So, all right, go, go. With, uh, with the Kendrick album, right? Uh, just looking at like the whole the album as a whole, uh, and then like even going back to the rollout and shit like that. Uh, one of the things that somebody pointed out, like he had released a letter uh, talking about how he had been gone for five years. He'd been going through things. And then, you know, on uh, I forget which song it is on the album. But, uh, like he starts out, he's like, I've been going through things. And then, you know, yeah. so, yeah, right. So, um, and at the end of that letter, uh, he signed it as like Oklahoma. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, if any of our folks out of Africa... Um, know how to pronounce it correctly hit us in the comments let me know um but basically that word uh that he was signing off as uh means my people and when i hear this album and the subject matter uh that he was talking about i was making a joke earlier uh saying like oh the reason why he wasn't fucking with it was because he ain't black but um i see what you're saying but like with him saying my people um it's not for me <laughs> him saying no, my that wasn't a joke that's what she's no that's yeah, what you're saying. i mean i was joking I'm, I'm joking about that because like when i when i feel like he wasn't he was of course he was addressing us black people um but he's also addressing like the culture as a whole like and hip-hop culture because like you know he's an ambassador of hip-hop culture if he's you know, viewed as one of the top niggas, then, you know, he's, uh, 
he's an ambassador to culture. So he was addressing the culture and just talking about all these different issues, um, like auntie diaries. Yeah, I was about to bring that. Fucking Yo, up. that shit is crazy. I know they trying. Uh, there's certain folks trying to cancel him on Twitter because of uh, a word that he uses a lot in that song. But the very last line of that song exactly they trying to cancel him for that yeah there's people yeah because some people just feel like you should not never use the word no matter what point you're trying to make but but he he's he like the i mean i don't want to defend him or or, or whatever I mean, I or seem tell, like i'm okay with yeah someone i can't using tell nobody word. how to because yeah, yeah. like that word isn't directed at me yeah. so i can't tell the people who is directed at how to feel about yeah, it yeah, yeah um right. i've seen some some of them would be like, nah, I get what he's trying to say. Yeah. And then, you know, there's other folks who don't fuck with it. So, like, I can't say anything about that. But just, like, for me as a listener um, and somebody who I never have looked at myself as homophobic or transphobic or anything like that. But now, having gotten older and having been around, uh, like, more people and just learning more things yeah. i may have there's times where like i unknowingly participated in yeah. some shit that like wasn't necessary that wouldn't make them comfortable you know what i'm saying yeah. and i don't i don't know if saying that some stuff didn't age well i don't know if that's the right the right word for it but like there's a lot of stuff particularly in like freestyle battles and shit like that mm -hmm. like i listen back now and they throw that word out so frequently yeah and like i kind of hear it now and kind of cringe it's just, yeah and, like, but like that was that wasn't the culture of that not being a, a word like a word a f offensive word like that you know yeah. back then when they were using it and so like you know having that song and then like him talking about like his family members and yeah. like you know what i'm saying like My auntie's I have, a man now yeah yeah like i got family members uh like I, you know i gotta i have uncles who have passed away now r.i.p but you know they was out here a part of that community and everything yeah. and like shit that's family i don't give a fuck like yeah. you know what i mean so it is what it is like so it's just relatable and hearing it broken down like that in rap and like relating it to family and shit like that and hearing like that and the way he broke it down and then hearing him still express love for yeah. his family and shit like that like it was just a dope song and even though like that's not something that i like am like i'm not a person who is trying to overcome homophobia or anything like that or change my perspective or anything but if i was somebody who was still using those words or doing different shit like that and like kendrick is somebody who i fuck with and i listen to that song i'm gonna be like well shit you know what i mean and i like that he gave that just and that's something that's been prevalent in our community not just the hip-hop community but just the black community you know what yeah, I'm saying? I, I was about to say that i was about to say how it's crazy how some people might characterize that song as being like brave or like a risk to make but like it shouldn't be you know but yeah. in in that in our community yeah it's that just could some be considered real shit, though. that could be considered like oh fuck like he took a chance making a song yeah. like supporting that shit which so, is yeah like so you know what i mean so just like for from that perspective um as uh just like as somebody who's been an artist and also just like a hip hop head and like the the way that I enjoy hip hop hip hop to appreciate the artistry and the message and then just as like a black man in America currently a father and just all of that shit and growing up with hip hop like it was just it was really dope to hear the message yeah. uh on this album and what he was trying and what he was doing um I disagree with Jason as a consumer uh, on a on a couple of accounts. I feel like there are uh, some of there are maybe, but then at the same time, this is that's it's subjective, right? Like yeah. so, it, it's what you like as a listener. But I feel like there are some records on here that are definitely like some radio records and some shit that like you could throw on it at a kickback or something like that, and it's not like crazy out of place. Like, it, I don't think there's a lot of them, 
Yeah. But Which there's one? a couple. Uh, Silent Hill with uh, Kodak Black. Especially if that hook puts these niggas on me like, hmm, puts me like me. That I feel like I could see that going crazy on TikTok and shit like that. Um, let's see. What's the. There's another song on here. Uh, I felt like. Why, why are you looking that up? I felt like me driving in my car to work over the past two days and playing that record was almost like a. That album was like a. Almost like a therapy session for me. Yeah. Well, it was so, and and I I know it was a therapy session. I, for him. I was taking the the less enthusiastic route because you both were like out the gate. I fucking love it. Oh yeah, <laughs> but, no, I mean, you gotta be the there, contra- we need a contrarian. There's things, there's things that I liked about it. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's not that I didn't like the record. Um, as far as songs that I thought were close to what what the I felt like was a missing element. The the placeholder for that probably count count me out. Count me out was one of my favorites. Count me out is probably my favorite song on the album. Yeah. Um. I like I said I was walk I was grocery shopping. I listened to part of it on my way home from work. I stopped at the grocery store on the way home and I was like I don't want to stop listening because I was only like two or three songs in. So I put my headphones in, and when that song came on, I was like. <laughs> yeah. I was like groove into it. Yeah, you know, I felt like the man. Like, while you were in the cheese well, section, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, nah, by then I was in the meats. But oh, pause. <laughs> he um, sets himself up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, so I like there were things, and that would be my my pick for like the bop, like that I would put on a playlist. It just as something that I can consume over and over and over again, right? Yeah. Um. What about Purple Heart? No, yeah. So I was uh, Purple Hearts. Uh, that I I just felt like a lot. So what I found over and over again, feeling listening to like the production, was I either heard a lot of violin, yeah, or a lot of vocals that were synthesized that sounded like violin. So I would say like almost half the record is probably the same type of mood. Um, and that's what was not the drawback because it's allowing him to tell his story, but I'm just saying like, as far as like me picking out the ones, the one I really fucked with other than that though, was, uh, the first song United grief. Mm. And that Mm. was just like, I like when he does that, like avant-garde jazz shit with like the fast rhythm beat, uh, Oh yeah, no, that was crazy. And he just goes after it. But I feel like, I like that shit. Like when, when I think of Kendrick. That's, what, that's yeah. the kind of shit I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I love that song, but I also feel like that song would be, like, the one that most people, like, most mainstream people would skip and be like, what the fuck is happening Oh, here? I love that shit. <laughs> but I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... But and properly placed as the first song, just an intro for the fans that recognize that portion of his music experience. And then for the other motherfuckers, they can just move on to the rest of the album. You know what I mean? I think that's very appropriate. But uh but as far as like joints that I could hear like on the radio and I think could do well commercially, die hard. Mm. Um the with blast like on the hook and like the vocals and stuff like that. Like I could hear that song like in Target. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, nah, but I could see that like just going like you know what I mean like it just kind of like taking off like I like I said Silent Hill like I can see that taking off on Twitter push these niggas on me like hmm like come on man push <laughs> these niggas on me like hmm push these niggas on me like bro I'm telling you that hook like bro I'm telling you niggas is already fucking with it I already even seen it on like mad stories like so I'm gonna um, post a story after this with that uh Father Time I feel oh, like yeah. that and that because uh, who uh, Sampha on the hook, like those vocals, bro. Yeah. That's an earworm, and it it changed the kind of the tone of the record. I feel yeah. Like. So I, I, when it hit that point, things started to like lift a little bit. Yeah. So so what I heard, and I don't, I, I probably should have tried to figure this out before, but may, maybe y'all heard it too. I was listening to someone on YouTube talk about this album. And so it's a double disc or like a double, like two different albums. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. And from what he said, and I don't know if this is true because, you know, I streamed it on Spotify. So it was all one thing is that Mm -hmm. the first one goes 
like from negative to kind of positive or, or something oh. along those lines. And the second one goes in reverse mm. as far as like the mood or the themes of the songs. Huh. So I don't know how true this is because like I said, I just listened to the whole, you know, whatever yeah. all in, in one go. But he intentionally placed songs on two mm. two different albums or two different discs. Yep. And so there's some kind of... Shit. Okay, so yeah, this if that's true, uh, and I didn't get to experience that portion of that the album or the experience as mm -hmm. a whole, yeah. But I feel like that makes this even hyper. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, that's what we were trying to tell you. Yeah, but no. you didn't experience that either. You were just writing. No, it. no. So I was, I was aware that it Pumps. was two discs. <laughs> I was aware that it was supposed to be two discs, and that uh, like Mr. Morale. And the big steppers. Wait, and those what are was two the first song on the first, or what was the first song on the second disc? Uh, first song on the second disc. I don't know, Google Man. What was it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you was the one that watched the video. Uh, first song on the second disc is "Count Me Out." Oh shit! See, and that's where the mood. And then, it, so that was he intentionally did mm. something. And I'm, I like I said, I don't want to just quote what that guy said because I don't know. I didn't hear it in that way. Uh -huh. But Kendrick specifically put songs on two different discs for a reason yeah and it's supposed to be something about the mood hmm. allegedly yeah interesting and so yeah. like still around the big steppers like there's a whole meaning like i think uh i've i feel like the first disc is the big steppers and the second disc is mr morale but i'm not sure but um I can I can look it up, man. <laughs> but uh, I would assume it'd be the other way around because of the title of the album. But right, fuck, yeah. do I know? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so like that's like so, just as like a just appreciating the artistry of what he did, the double disc, the messaging, the experimenting with different sounds. Uh, this album doesn't sound like Anything? other any any other album. There's nothing I can really compare it to. That's true. Um, yeah. There's no. I don't think any other rapper on earth could have made this album. Um, also so true. like, there's all of that. And then as just a consumer, a listener, like I said, I disagree with uh, Jason. Like, not saying there was there weren't any bops on here. Count me out too. Um, but yeah, so I, there was a few bops on, there was a few joints on here. I was like, oh, okay. I could hear this on the radio. I could hear this at the kickback and it'd be cool. Um, so, so yeah, like I, I, I just, so, but I mean, that's I just think, subjective though. I know right? it's so, subjective. Yeah. I just think it's important. It's, no, it's the you. only reason why I highlighted that. Cause that was the only thing I felt that was lacking. Yeah. Um, cause like the artistry part is great for the fandom and it's it's part of being an artist right mm -hmm. a musician but as far as like wh where it fits in like music is always meant to bring people together right so talking about different issues and stuff that are controversial it walks that line it could bring people together or it could divide people yeah right so the one thing that always brings us together is what? It's the bops. Yeah. It's the shit. You know what I mean? So I just think it's an important part of an album to have those one or two songs. And I guess you're you're probably right. There were those one or two songs there. I only picked out one as one that I really fucked with. Yeah. So it kind of, for me, I was like, oh, I was hoping for maybe another, another or a couple more, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was super theatrical and, um, I don't think did I leave make a reference to anything? I don't think I compared it to anything else. I couldn't think of anything for it. It's not much. Yeah. So but but speaking of that, so what do you think where do you think this lands for 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 albums this year? I mean, so far this year is I think it's it's the best it's the best album I've heard in 2022. But when I think of Kendrick uh, I think of some people that he even mentioned on the album. Mm -hmm. He said like that Drake and Kanye were cool again, and he didn't know how to feel about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and that just kind of makes me think about like kind of like the hip hop hierarchy, right? So I would say going into like the COVID hiatus or the uh, uh, worldwide health crisis hiatus. I think you guys say it like that for YouTube, right? Um, probably like the big three would have been Kendrick, Drake, Cole. Like as current dudes who were, all right, these are the best motherfuckers. And have like the commercial success to yeah. back it up. And big fan bases, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, it had been a while. Uh, well, uh, Cole had dropped the, uh, what was that joint? Off season. Um, oh, what? Songs? Uh, what was it? It was something about drugs or, uh, what was it called? The Are you talking about albums? Yes. KOD. KOD. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, so you dropped KOD. So when was that? Like 2018? Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was the most recent. Uh, Scorpion from Drake was his last album. Uh, I think Scorpion might have been... When was Scorpion? Google man. Was that also 2018 or 2016? Uh, Scorpion was released June 29th, 2018. And Kendrick uh, hadn't released since before that because it was what, five years? Yeah, so 17. Yeah, 17. Right? So yeah. 2017. All right. So we hadn't had an album from any of the big three for a little yeah. bit. COVID hits and then everything goes on pause and the music industry kind of goes on pause. All the big names are like, well, we're not going to drop albums right now. We can't tour. We can't yeah. do any of that shit. I'm not just going to take the streaming money. Right. So we're kind of on pause. And then we have the rise of like rappers like Lil Baby, like, uh, you know, some of these other dudes just kind of uh, the baby. Both them babies, man. <laughs> All the babies. Right? Like, so these babies just start <laughs> growing babies. up right before our eyes <laughs> during like, this time. I like where this is going. Right? <laughs> <laughs> during this time. Um, and, uh, you know, the big names are just sitting back because they're like, yo, nah, man, it's, it, it's not even worth it to drop an album right now. But these other guys are building their names. So all of a sudden they're becoming big stars because there's a void of the of the, the like summer upper enchilon yeah of motherfuckers of the big three right yeah. uh so um drake drops like the dark lane demo tapes or whatever and it's just basically a bunch of throwaway songs yeah it's kind of like yeah whatever he has that tiktok song on there yeah, whatever you know <laughs> uh right foot up left foot slide yeah you know whatever oh the right? keep it shuffle yeah uh something the I think it was the Tootsie Slide. Oh yeah, was the name of that song. Anyway, stupid fucking fuck man. that shit. <laughs> Shout out to Drake, friend of the show. <laughs> um, so <laughs> uh, you know, um, but he he doesn't have an album. We are already aware of uh, Certified Lover Boy. Just the title, right? Certified Lover Boy, Drake. Like this sounds like it's gonna be crazy. Like, oh, nigga, this Drake about to drop some certified lover boy shit. Oh, shit, what is this about? Like, it's about to go crazy. I think it sounds stupid, but... Well, but think about it, though. Drake, his whole image, yeah, yeah. everything that he... If you're a Drake fan, certified lover boy sounds like you're about to get, like, some peak Drake shit. And if you're in the Drake, then it's lit. Right? I mean, I fucks with Drake. Yeah, but you feel me, right? I feel you. Yeah, so... I just keep thinking, of, like, fuck boy. Yeah, but I mean, because like, just, if, but that's Drake. Yeah, because but have, did that. Drake. Yeah, but have you ever heard? Yeah, but but certified lover boy is a whole lot more marketable than fuck boy. Yeah, I mean, maybe like because when, people already know the term. Well, yeah, but I mean, you can put certified lover boy more places. <laughs> you, like you can say it true. on YouTube. It's like that's it's like true. it's like two chains and titty boy. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So, um, is that why there's two chains? Yeah. Two tits. Yeah. Uh, two chains, two tits. Shit. Two chains. Uh -huh. Four bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> Ten toes. Oh, shit. <laughs> but, um, uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, nah, so um anyway, certified lover boy, like the whole marketing campaign for it. Um, there was like this he got caught uh a helicopter flew over, he got caught, he had rented out Dodger Stadium and took uh this chick Shit, out yeah. on a date or whatever and like the helicopter yes. flies over like all right so like and then certified lover boy is coming out like i told i don't care what anybody says that was part of the rollout like you know what i'm saying and like that certified lover boy shit he was going around with the heart cut into his hair wasn't he beefing with Pusha t at the time too uh Yes, but I think that was just that just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Beefing with Kanye too. Yeah. Um but uh but yeah, so like there was marketing we're thinking we're gonna get like this <clears throat> Drake project, right? And what we get? <sighs> we get some certified lover boy bullshit. <laughs> we got we got pandemic music. Got ache. We got inside music. Drake is like uh, Drake is for outside. Like he yeah. has them joints that make you want to hit the party. Like the closer we got to that was way too sexy. Mm. Which is fuck it. I don't like that song. Pop the Tesla, now she going electric. Like nigga, I, don't I know. wanted to hear God's plan type shit. Yes, there God's was none plan. of that. See now God's when I listened plan. to Drake's yeah. album, right? Yeah. I was like, yo, where is the shit? He had a couple of joints on there where he was rapping his ass off. But I mean, it's Drake. You're one of the best fucking rappers in the world. Yeah. Like, you this is you do that. Yeah. Like, where's the shit that makes me want to party? Yeah. It wasn't there. The closest one was probably, there was uh, way too sexy, but that's ass. So the closest one to, like, really wanting to party was the joint with 21 Savage. Oh, uh, Knife Talk? Yeah. Yeah. And then they had the Project Pat at the beginning. Mm. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, that shit had me turned up. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, there wasn't enough of that on the album for me. Like, I feel like the album would have been so much better to me if he had to just, like, put Laugh Now, Cry Later on there. The album would have been so much more better for me if he just didn't release it. <laughs> wow! But <laughs> damn. All right, so so that's Drake. That's uh, CLB. I, I didn't listen to that. So I don't know. No, he I didn't miss out on anything at all. all right. Donda. You guys already know how I feel about Donda. Yeah. All right. So I feel like Donda and the way that Kanye put it together, the rollout for it, the how he went to four different or you know uh, he was in Chicago. He was in uh, was he in Atlanta? Atlanta. Um, you know, he's doing these big grand listening parties and basically the album is still under construction. Like the first time we heard it and then the second time we heard it is different. And you know what I mean? So he's going around doing all this stif stuff like just we I've never just I've never seen a top artist give us high production listening parties to my album that's still under construction. Yeah. One day he's just gonna have a time machine, go oh. back in time, do a listening party for them. Yeah, come back like, to the future just to see how the fuck it changed the world. Yeah, man. Damn, some shit. That's yeah. some yay shit. Yeah, yeah. totally yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yay yay. I don't know why I did that. Sorry, but uh, but if yay and uh, Elon Musk ever team up, man, it's they're it's they're homies already, bro. Oh, fuck yeah. This might be on its way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's gonna do listening parties for Mars. Yeah. yeah, pretty yeah, and we'll have to tune in with the old like channel receiver radio or something. Mm -hmm. But they're on owning... SpaceX. Ooh. Oh, they'll probably the boring company will probably release their own like stereo. Yeah, I was, about to, I, I was about to say you can only get it on the exclusive yeah, SpaceX antennas that you might. have to buy. That's like four hundred bucks. Yeah, from if, if that becomes a normal thing, I might buy it just so I can tune in. SpaceX stem players. The... Oh. So now it's just media device? It's everything. Oh, so it's a computer. <laughs> it's too advanced. You wouldn't you get it You don't know yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> can't understand it, Jason. All right, my bad. Um, Cole, Cole dropped off season. That's the name of the album? Yeah, off season. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why yeah, I thought yeah. it was something else. Yeah. Burning basketball hoop. Yeah. No, but um, it was, no, Cole's album was dope. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, of course... For me, Ye's was 
the shit, but I'm biased because yeah, he's my nigga. Yeah. Um, Cole's album was awesome. Uh, Kick Drake's album's ass. Mm. Uh, like fucking F- Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then there's another guy who uh, dropped an album. And Does his name rhyme with Sack? Uh, no, not that guy. Oh, okay. Uh, there's another guy who dropped an album. <laughs> um, and uh, he's the opposite of the past. Um, yeah. Doesn't rhyme with sack. No. <laughs> and this guy, uh, some people are uh, putting him in the conversation for the GOAT. Some people are putting him, uh, feel like he should be in the conversation for like number one nigga right now and honestly i can understand where they're coming from with that because like if we talking about number one dude right now like most of these cats who's coming out with a song if they put this guy on the hook then it's out of here yeah when drake tried to make a hit on his weak ass album he called this guy uh so future man this future album. I put on the first song and it started off with that. Whatever. Middle Eastern sound of music. No disrespect to them. <laughs> and I was ready to party. <laughs> when you put future on on some of that shit that sound like it came out of Dubai. It's lit. It's lit. Even when you when you give him like uh, Mar- March Madness, if you look at the mm-hmm. the artwork from March Madness, he got that Muslim writing on there. Whenever he do some Middle Eastern shit, it's out of here. Um, but that being said, this future album it was it was cool, but I feel like I gotta be like, nah, it's it's dope, but like this is outside music. Yeah. This is outside music. I wanted when Drake dropped his album, I thought I was gonna feel like Future's album. How Future dropped a better Drake album than Drake? <laughs> Why Future making me feel like this? <laughs> so I'm so conflicted internally. He he, he got to work with the the Nuren sisters. What? You never you never heard of them? Okay, explain. Uh it's uh like Indian music. Ooh, okay. Hold on, let me show you this. Gonna say you never heard of them like I heard of them. No, 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 no. Hold up. Let me I'm gonna show like you. Like we like I'll be listening to Indian music. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, what? They kind of wild, dude. They're they're the the vocals and the the rhythm and shit, the way the shit they do. Yeah. Oh, oh, future yeah. would kill this shit. Ooh, Juka Me Belly. Yeah. Remember when Jay Z dropped that that shit? <laughs> yeah, man. Why are they? Why? Why are they? Oh, isn't it called Punjabi something? Mm-hmm. The the Jay Z one. Why? Why are they a thing? Are they just like big in India? Um, so I actually found them because someone on TikTok took this video and put it over a beat, mm. like like a, a beat beat. And I was like, "Yo, this is fucking yeah, this guy, look at this guy jamming." Yeah, I was like, "Yo, this is fucking dope." Who the fuck are they? So I started looking up, and this is the original video. And then I was listening to some of their music. It's kind of kind of crazy. But you mentioned that, and I was like, "Yo, this would go hard." Dude. Oh yeah, nah, Future would murk this shit. Hey. How you, how you send the hoes back to the streets <laughs> whoa <laughs> to that shit yeah nigga i mean it's future everybody know that's what he do oh <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh i send my young women back to the pond pond because they're silly gooses <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh but yeah nah man so as far as uh like just some of those top guys dropping albums after yeah. this hiatus future kanye q 
Kendrick. Cole. Cole. Mm -hmm. Drake. <laughs> Damn. Like way back there. <laughs> Drake is over at the neighbor's crib. Right? <laughs> he crossed the street. I feel like there's no way 2022 is ending without Drake dropping some shit. You think? Some outside shit. You think? I feel like there's no way that it's ending without him dropping some shit, bro. He knows. Everybody knows that CLB wasn't it. He even, he did the... Maybe he's on the decline. No. No. Maybe this is the trajectory. No, Drake's not on the decline because that other guy who dropped an album. No bottom. Drake made an appearance on that, uh, on that album. Does it and rhyme Drake's with? appearance on that album was pretty inspired and was better rapping than pretty much anything that was on his own album. Does it rhyme with Tack Fafarlo? Yes. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> you. Take my bit. Sack. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> oh, shit. But uh, Jack Harlow. I guess not for Farlow, just Farlow. Yeah. <laughs> He's Jack <stupid>. Farlow. <laughs> um, all right, so he dropped an album. Uh, some, Is that what we calling it now? Uh, he dropped an album. Yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> that's what he did. He did yeah. drop an album. That was... I found felt this... felt like a mixtape. I felt this album to be... I found this album to be incredibly boring. Um... <laughs> I All right, think, cool. We're on the same wavelength because I, I fell asleep what, uh, listening to it. I didn't even hear that feature. By the I way, think, uh, I think Jack Harlow is a good rapper. I think he's made good rap before. I heard somebody say that this album sounds like he feels like he made it. And mm. I can understand where that comes from because a lot of his uh, older stuff. I mean, it sounds like he took his foot off the gas pedal. Well, yeah. Like he wasn't so, hungry anymore. Huh. But think about it, right? Like, his older stuff was all about being on the come up and stuff like that. Like, if you think about where, like, his shit was coming from and where he wanted to be mm -hmm. to, like, now this album is out. The, the label is throwing a big listening party for you. It's set up for you and Drake and the homies to be at the fucking Kentucky Derby as, like, big time guests and just kicking it and doing shit and he's from kentucky so this is in his home state his hometown you probably never thought you were gonna be at the derby like that like and now you here with the biggest art the biggest rapper in the world like and y'all kicking it that's your nigga now like you know what i'm saying like you that dude so like when I think of it from that perspective, like the album kind of makes sense. Some of the shit that he was talking about, like they're playing him up to be like the ladies guy. So he was trying to make a lot of ladies records on there and shit like, but that shit was boring, man. That shit was fucking. I like, feel like it wasn't even just, it wasn't even just that it was boring. It was like, there were moments and it was just awkward to me. Like yeah. he was, it was like, uh, you know, in film where they talk about you show the audience, don't tell them. I feel like in rap, he's, you're talking, right? So yeah. there's a fine line you got to walk with the narration and how you progress, like uh, the vibe and feeling or if there's a topic or theme, you know? So we talked about a lot with the uh, Kendrick shit, but like there was a point where he did the Dua Lipa song, right? Mm -hmm. And then the one after one was Side Piece. He was like, mm -hmm. I already did a song for my main bitch. So let me do a record for my side piece. Yeah. I'm just like, I mean, all right, I guess. Like, <laughs> yeah. you just gonna explain all the little things like, that you're doing. Like, and it, it just felt like really on the nose. Like, he's not, he, he wasn't trying to be creative. It was just like, I'm going to do this song. Then I'm going to do that song. Mm -hmm. And then, like. And I think, man. like, it's, it kind of. Like, that's kind of his persona online. And, like, that kind of seems like how he presents stuff. I bet that's kind of maybe how he performs, mm. like, at his shows and stuff. Like, hey, guys, we're going to do this. Well, then maybe it and hits like, for some people, you know? Maybe that's his fan base. I mean, maybe his people yeah. that... The people that really fuck with Jack Harlow, probably this it hits and fits, like, in there. But I still think... I think he could have gave 
a better effort, a better project. There was like the first class song. I put that on the playlist. I like that song. Yeah. And like it's cool when it stands alone, yeah. like as its as its own song. But like there's a couple couple other like similar samples that he uses from that same time period on this album and shit. So like by the time like just listening to it all on the album, like in the album, I don't even like that song as much when I'm listening to the mm. album as a body of work because like it just kind of all like blends together. Mm. The high note of that album is the song with Drake, Churchill Downs. Mm. That is the high note of the album because like that's the song where he it feels like he like there's other parts of verses. Like not even full verses, but like parts of verses where he's talk or talking about certain stuff where it's like, oh, okay, here's the real Jack Harlow peeking through, and I can like feel what yeah. he's talking about. Churchill Downs is like the one where I can feel what he's saying, and then Drake comes on with his verse and yeah. starts talking about like, oh, I'm here for therapy. I'm sitting in the lobby for therapy. I'm here for abandonment issues. I'm like, okay, what the fuck are we talking about here? Yeah. I'm locked in. Yeah, and like just like the like just like as soon as the beat comes on for this churchill down song it's like okay we yeah, here yeah and then like when drake's voice comes in like if you didn't know drake was going to be on the song like when drake's voice comes in you're like oh shit you already before he even raps like okay because this one of those beats that you know he's going to eat up and that he's going to like talk to you about some real shit on this one like he has like drake has that mode and this beat was like i almost it almost feels like this beat could have been on drake's album mm. like this song could have been yeah. drake's song on his album and drake harlow was a feature yeah. it almost feels like that yeah like this song almost feels out of place on this album but it's the best song on this album hmm. uh but I with jack harlow what was interesting to me he started getting a lot of hate kind of before this album and i get it because like online he's been being pushed really hard and you could see like the label uh working the gears behind the scenes to push him uh ahead of yeah. this album right he was projected to do like close to two hundred thousand the first week or something like that and ended up doing like 110k but with all that being said and all the shit i've done on this album I think Jack Harlow is going to bounce back with a really good offering. And I feel like the hate and everything is going to fuel him and actually give him something to talk about. I hope so. Because it feels like, because, you know, when I listen to like some of his older stuff, like it feels like a nigga on the come up. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, it reminds me that, of like that, that hunger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And here it just feels <laughs> like maybe he's maybe he's just like excited, like looking around like, yo, this is where I'm at. But like niggas don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean. It's, or like don't or do it different like <laughs> yeah no i mean that's kind of the point i th felt like i get that that sentiment about like maybe this is just him basking in it yeah but like like strut at least like yeah, fucking like, like air it out yeah like, talk let some motherfuckers shit. know yeah not, like it just it like, he says some shit about, like, the haters and people who didn't believe, but, like, nigga, drop some names. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Stir the pot a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, like, hey, y'all bitch-ass niggas at it, my high school. It felt like... <laughs> Say the N-word. No, don't do that. Felt, <laughs> don't do that, I Jack. think I think the, this is the opposite issue, which is a less... I think it's more of an issue to have. But then my take on Kendrick's was... It felt like he wanted every song to be some shit you could hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. And it almost was like, almost none of it was. Mm -hmm. Except for like the hits, right? Like yeah. the main one, um, First Class first was the class. big one, right? Yeah. Like, I was excited when First Class came, when I got to that part of the album, just because I, I fucked with that song. Yeah. And it was a change of pace. Like everything was so kind of like, nothing amped up boring it, ass it, album. yeah not like the beats and i i it sucks because i remember leading up to it, seeing him talking about like having his hands more in the production and like writing shit while the beats being made and working with the producer dude i was so stoked to, yeah. to see what he did with pharrell and that was the biggest disappointment of the yeah, album like how do you not i was so you, i was bro, like what the fuck is this like and the he had justin timberlake on there 
Like, nigga, that should have been, like, the motherfucking white boy power connection. <laughs> and, like, how do you make a bad song with Justin Timberlake? It, it, I didn't think about this Both before. Them, like, Justin Timberlake, back back in the NSYNC days, he had the curly ramen noodle hair. Yeah. Jack Harlow yeah, has the curly dude, ramen yeah, noodle hair. Man. Like, nigga, this, that song should have had white bitches exploding from <laughs> fucking here to Russia. It makes it, it probably <laughs> does, <damn>. honestly. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, but it sounded like ass. <laughs> Yo, that might be on my playlist <laughs> if that actually works. And we going I'm going to take a trip to Russia. I'll be back. Uh not now. Russia, maybe. I'm on my way. Maybe mm, later. Yeah. Uh, it's well, kind of rough over later. there. <laughs> Where do you No, nah, cuz everyone's off fighting war, so like now's my time. Uh, all right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, um but yeah, it, it just it, a lot a lot of it felt really redundant and I don't want to say boring, but yeah, I guess it was boring. No, it was boring, dude. Bro. The first the first two tracks sounded like interlude. It sounded like he had an intro then an interlude. I yeah. was like, you don't need to interlude your intro. Just get right into it. <laughs> yeah, and he like, didn't I, hit us until halfway through that. Because I can't say necessarily that it was bad because it what it wasn't like the beats or ass, and it wasn't like he no. was like rapping terribly. Nah, like he was. But he no, was doing everything okay, but it was just like, these aren't fucking good songs. That's why I said it sounded like a mixtape. It sounded like mm. somebody was trying to figure some shit out. Yeah, man. Jack Harlow, I believe in you, bro. I know you got something better. I, uh, I think he <clears> just was taking advantage of being able to get the features that he could get. He yeah, was like, like slapping shit together like, oh, I'm going to get this dude. I'm going to get this dude. And I'm just going to have a good time. And I, maybe he wasn't really thinking about like creating an experience like you, you got Lil I mean? Wayne on there Lil Wayne felt like sound like he ain't care <laughs> yeah um who else was yeah like the yeah the Justin Timberlake like I was like mm. when I saw Justin Timberlake on there I was like oh shit this shit about to go crazy and he came on I was like this shit didn't even go crazy it's so crazy that they're there's this so many completely elements. sane there's so many elements of like the hype levels for this like being off the charts yeah and it's so crazy that it just kind of like uh i was talking to a homie of mine and he said like he thought it was ass at first but then he kept listening to it and the album grew on him mm. i don't think i'm gonna give this a, i can't give this a second <laughs> listen like i was so bored like i've this was it's been a while since i've been listening to an album and looking like yo is this shit almost over damn yeah that i fell asleep i had to what, oh, maybe go, I'll put go that on back tonight when i get home and get me some good stuff oh yeah there you go see yeah. if that worked now you know but i like jack harlow man like he had there was even with this album being like eh, like there were some moments like there were some bars and there were some moments and there was some shit where i was just like all right man yeah he can do this like you know what I mean? I'm not even... Like, you know I don't really, like, listen to Future. Yeah. I like Future's album way better. See? And I'm so glad that I listened to Future after him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was fun. It would, like, change the mood I should have did that. Yeah. It was completely... I listened to Future first, and then I no. listened to Jack Harlow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not the way to go. And I was like, yeah. yo, this is some fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try, so, try, try listen again, but listen to Future after Jack Harlow. Yeah. I probably would have... I pro I mean, it still would have been boring, but I probably would That was have... probably the way it was intended, the way... Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like Jack Harlow and Future teamed up. Yeah, except <laughs> Future released it too soon. Yeah. Well, you know, because Jack Harlow came out the week before... And then Future came out oh, the week did. after. So that's probably... He, oh, that shit. It was supposed to go like that chronologically. And then the week after that, Kendrick came. Mm. So it was like, hey, listen to this shit. And then, <laughs> boom. Hey, and then, turn bam. up. Party. Huh. And now, boom. Mm. Hey, now, now think about your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kendrick was just like, I'm just going to wait for all these other people to drop their shit. Yeah. There. I mean, no, he literally said that he's been watching. Nice. So, um, all right, we've been going for a while, but there is like a, a couple, uh, just, uh, you know, like one more thing that I want to. Which one? Talk, talk to. your shit. Um, 
So recently we had an episode about Atlanta, and since then, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't do any more regional episodes. <laughs> and since then, it's it been seems a shit like, storm ever since. Uh, it seems like the the city has been on fire. Now, the most recent thing, and this just happened this week. Hmm. Sorry, I had to take a second to compose myself because uh, I'm getting a little bit emotional. But the Migos are breaking up. <gasps> Quavo and Takeoff are dropping uh, some shit together under the name Unk and Few because Quavo is uh, Takeoff's uncle and Takeoff is Quavo's nephew. It is a terrible name. <laughs> it is a fucking terrible name. What? They should have just called it Quavo and Takeoff. <laughs> what the fuck is Uncle Few? <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that shit no more. I feel like you just ordered something from a Thai restaurant. I'm not saying that shit no more, nigga. I'm not. I'll be like, nigga, I'm never going to say, yo, put on that Uncle Few. <laughs> nigga, what the fuck that sound I, like? I'd rather call him a Quayoff. Yeah, all the fucking sense. Uncle Few, that's all they could come up with. Take Uncle both. Vo. <laughs> nigga, um, nigga, just uncle and nephew is better than Uncle <laughs> Few. A few of what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> What's a few? A few oh, less God. members. <laughs> nigga, what you mean? <laughs> Somebody but, don't know how to count. But. There is, uh, so, so. Uh, supposedly there's some beef there has been beef with uh, the Migos and QC uh, little bit the rise of little baby um, I don't, if you uh, remember when the last Migos album dropped uh, and, and we talked about it they it seemed like they were doing more of the marketing on their own and yeah. QC kind of wasn't really touching it and that seemed weird to me at the time but seems like they're beefing um offset uh and cardi b are kind of on an island it seems but what else is going on in atlanta right now motherfuckers getting arrested okay i thought you were gonna say something about chance the rapper <laughs> i mean i'm sorry Ch 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 <laughs> all right motherfuckers getting He's in arrested Kauai. Yeah, see, there you go. Motherfuckers getting arrested. Rico charges. Mm. Bunch now, of them. Right. Now, the Migos have been active longer than uh, in, the, in the mainstream. Have been active longer than mm -hmm. a lot of the YSL cats. The Migos have been rumored to have some... Uh, some real ties the migos um have been known to even now uh at their current state beat motherfuckers up and shit like that possibly could have other motherfuckers around not saying that they doing nothing not snitching or none of that <laughs> but possibly this beef may be a smoke screen and them just trying to stay ahead of what's going on in the city. So they're trying to break up to not uh to not bring attention to themselves or some shit to make it seem like they ain't doing shit. Possibly. Or like you know what I mean? Or just to kinda like, hey, motherfuckers shit is hot right now in the city. They looking into all the rappers they looking into all the niggas who make trap music and who do and who be in the city and who got money and who got chains. Let's just put some distance between ourselves, do some other shit, just have some other shit going on. Wait, so the guy that's being dropped, you think he's the one involved? Well, Offset has done time. He's been locked up oh. before. Um, and there was a period of time where he was in jail and the Migos were still carrying on and it was famously known that they still kept splitting the money three ways when they did shows even when he was locked up. 
Um, that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> like if if they like, oh shit, they cracking down right now. They're digging up anything they can. Exactly. Everybody. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So it could be that you know it could just be like some smart shit because these niggas is literally family. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I. Yeah. Unk and few. fucking few. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And then uh, Offset is their, uh, I think cousins. Quavo and uh, Offset are cousins. Or they're, you know. So they're both uncles? Or, I don't know. Niggas is cousins <laughs> and one of them is an uncle, nigga. So. <laughs> and maybe one's a nephew? Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Or, or maybe, I guess, like, uh, Quavo's mom is both their grandmother, but none of their sisters. But then, and then, <laughs> she had, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> Quavo's mom is is both their grandmothers, and then their parent, and then Offset and fucking. This is taking too off. much of my mental energy or to try to figure out moms their family or tree. sisters. All right, but what's their dog's name? <laughs> Fuchsia's. <laughs> this thing is trying to think of a name. <laughs> Did you say Confucius? <laughs> yeah. That might be the most Asian thing you've ever said. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, I consider I don't speak Asianese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's oh, a weird. pretty Asian thing to say for a Siberian. Oh, uh, shit. I think yeah. they're Asian. Siberians? Or our right. Asian Siberian. Oh, mm-hmm. tune in next time on Dragon <laughs> yeah. Ball Z. At, at this point, yeah. we just need to stop. Uh, <laughs> but uh, please, <laughs> nah. But uh, but yeah. So I'm just thinking, like, with everything that's going on in Atlanta, like shit is just getting crazy, bro. Like, Migos breaking up. There's a new group springing up out of the Migos. Offset uh, is probably gonna do some solo shit. Um, he should just lay the fuck low. I mean, if he's not doing nothing now, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they can't char, they can't retry him for the shit he already did. That's double jeopardy. But um, yeah, so I mean, just don't do nothing now. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Just yeah, just do some music. Just be a rapper. <laughs> um. But yeah, Young Thug, Gunna already locked up. Uh, rumors that they might start looking into 21 Savage and the gang that he was affiliated with, allegedly. Uh, rumors that they might look into Lil Baby. Um, it's just, it's getting crazy. Uh, it feels like they're going to have to move differently a little bit some of them crews like how they were just kind of everybody was clicked up and just moving around and everybody just mingling with everybody in atlanta they might have to like cut some of that down cut down some of these entourages do just you know what i mean like it's just gonna be different in the city and that that's one thing like listening to joe budden's podcast like he was talking about like the hip-hop police and like how they move down in atlanta and because the laws are different maybe that's why new york uh, New York's hip hop scene wasn't as dominant mm. as they were because like niggas can't click up and like it's just so much shit like if too many niggas show up at one spot then all of a sudden the police presence is heavy and shit like that so um, <clears throat> like the way he was explaining that kind of makes me think and kind of makes me worry for like cause Atlanta for so many years that's like you know cats was clicked up and people was doing shit together like i would have thought that gunna and little baby was on the same level on the same label as much as they like team up and click up and stuff like that but they're not but they just cool and they in the same city and shit like that so niggas do shit like that um so it's just i don't know man it's it's I hope that, uh, I mean, you know that in a city like that, there's motherfuckers just waiting to to step in. But uh, I hope that um, 
you know, just everything turns out okay yeah. for everybody. Like, motherfuckers still got families and shit like that. Like, Young Thug has, uh, you know, he got kids. He got a daughter and shit like that. Like, you know what I mean? He need a hat. He does, man. That's a that's a dope dad for show. Sure. Slap. But, um, yeah, man. I guess that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Nah. I, I ain't got none. All right. Well, hey. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this was a rather heavy hip hop epi- uh, ep- episode, but we do that sometimes, man. Sometimes we're gonna fucking nerd out and do some rap shit, talk about some rap shit. Uh, yeah. But all right, we're not gonna talk anymore. So bye. Here's our outro. This is really aggressive. <laughs> <laughs>